Joining us for today's call from management is Steve Cotton, President and CEO, Judd Merrill, the company's Chief Financial Officer, and Ben Taker, Chief Engineering and Operating Officer. During today's call, management will be making forward with a statement. Please refer to the company's report of the Form 10Q filed today, April 28th, for a summary of the forward-looking statements and the risks, uncertainties, and other factors. Good cause actual results to differ materially from those forward-looking statements. Offer metal caution to not to replace undue reliance on any forward-looking statements. The company does not undertake and specifically disclaim any obligation to update or revise this statement to reflect new circumstances or unanticipated events as they occur except as required by law. As a reminder, after management's formal remarks, we'll be taking questions. Questions will be accepted over the phone from analysts and all other investors can submit a question using the online webinar portal provided in today's and last week's press release. We will take as many questions as we can in our available time slot. And with that, I'd like to turn the call to Steve Cotton, CEO of Offer Metal. Steve, please go ahead. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you everybody for attending today. Uh, for those of you that have access to the slide deck, you can follow along and uh, we're going to refer to the slide numbers uh, as we go through the slides for uh, those of you that are looking at the slide deck, not synchronized, but offline. And for those of you that don't have access to the slides, you can listen along and refer to the deck at a later time. So I'm going to start with slide number one, uh, which is that Aqua Metals, as evidenced today by some announcements uh, that we made earlier this morning, as well as uh, further materials that we will be providing, we are really leading a revolution in both lead and lithium battery recycling. Moving on to the next slide, uh, Glenn read to you guys the safe harbor, so I'm not going to belabor that. That's for your reference. Slide number three is our mission statement. That is to provide sustainable metal recycling for materials that are strategic to energy storage applications. Our proven breakthrough technology, aqua refining, returns these raw materials to the manufacturing supply chain in both a clean way and an economical way, reducing reliance on mining to meet the growing demand. Slide number four is a quote that shows two quotes, really, from the U.S. Secretary of Energy, Jennifer Granholm, as well as a general comment from the U.S. Department of Energy. And I won't read those quotes to you, but you can see that effectively the vision for the future of stored energy recycling, closed-loop processes, is about air and water and clean energy as input. And off refining differentiates greatly from the other technologies that are out there because we uniquely use the renewable electron versus fire that's used for smelting, which is the only commercially proven process today to recycle lithium ion batteries and lead batteries, uh, and uh, also uh, chemicals as the reagent. So it's, it's really important differentiator for off refining that we use that electron because it can be renewable and it makes it worthwhile to make the full energy transition and power that energy transition from clean processes. The next slide, number five, is that our technologies are really aligned with DOE vision for these reasons. We use a room temperature closed loop fundamentally non-pollutive process. We've already commercially proven our lead recycling capabilities, which we'll talk about where we are um, with our lead deployment very soon here in this presentation. We've got a cleaner and more cost-efficient recovery and recycling process, so the economics are there as well as the environmental. We've reduced a higher quality end product with flexibility that I'll talk about. And we're expanding, of course, to the lithium recycling metals, which are inclusive of cobalt, nickel, manganese, copper, and lithium. And in order to do all this as an enabler, as well as a technology partner, we are patent protected on a global basis. Slide number six is uh, a summary of our recent milestones. And we've had a very busy year so far, and we're going to uh, talk about that as well as what's coming up for the remainder of the year. As you'll see in the blue, which is uh, the past to present, and then we'll get into the green, which is the present to future. In March, we already announced that we produced the high purity lithium hydroxide at our innovation center, where Judd, Ben, and I are sitting today. Our uh, high purity lithium hydroxide is unique, and we'll talk about some of the attributes of that, but that's quite a milestone, and we believe that we are the first company that produced high purity lithium hydroxide from black mass in the lithium ion recycling world. In March, uh, we also, 
on March 22nd announced that we produce high purity copper at our innovation center in metal form. And we'll show pictures of uh, these materials, by the way, as we move through the deck. On April 28th, we, uh, which is basically our announcement uh, today, uh, we announced that we produced high purity nickel at our innovation center. So we have one more metal to get the high purity production to go, which is the cobalt, as we prepare, as we move towards to the green line for Q2, Q3 deployment um, at uh, uh, Acme in Taiwan, our lead recycling, which we're very excited about. We'll talk about more. And we're also preparing by Q3 of 2022 our pilot scale operational testing of our end-to-end -end black mass to uh, end product lithium ion off refining system right here at the Innovation Center at Tahoe Retail Industrial Center. By Q4, Q1 of 2022, getting into 2023, we can see the potential first full scale deployment of off refining for lithium ion batteries. Our ticker is AQMS on NASDAQ. We are incorporated in 2014. We have 75 million shares outstanding as of March 31st. Cash on hand of nine million as of March 31st, and the company is debt free and has a very strong balance sheet. And Judge will be speaking to our financials a little bit later on in our presentation today. Moving on to slide number seven, let's summarize the highlights of our accomplishments just in the past 90 days uh, to date in uh, this quarter, Q1. First off, is that our lithium off refining here in the Innovation Center, the black mass of the critical metals production is nearly complete. And we, as I referenced earlier, produced the world's first lithium hydroxide, what we believe is the world's first high-purity copper metal in, in metal form, and the world's first high-purity nickel metal in metal form from varied battery chemistry from varied with black mass sources. I'd like everybody to close their eyes for a second and envision a world that has the future of clean energy uh, closed loop that has a company that can produce these materials and then open them and look at the front of your eyes what we've accomplished with our innovation center. Nobody else has accomplished that. Second, our secured black uh, mass feedstock is really critical for our pilot system through the year of 2023. You'll see in our press release that we put out today on our quarterly results that we secured that black mass feedstock and that ensures our supply to meet the pilot scale needs as we get through the year 2023 through varied supply chain commitments that we've made for that black mass. So there's no more concern on supply through the year 2023 for the company for input feedstock to its processes. Third, we've added key organizational capabilities. We've added engineers um, to help um, our innovation uh, proceed at a more rapid rate. Um, for the Asia-Pacific region, we brought on our leader, Justin Chen, that we announced. You can see in our prior announcements to help us on the ground there in Taiwan with our lead deployment of oxy refining in Taiwan, as well as the business development related to that, which we'll talk about, and um, our overall age pack strategy inclusive of lithium. Uh, Justin was the country manager for China for Agrimal, which is the world's largest lithium company. Um, we also hired our chief strategist um, uh, at, at, on, as to the company as um, uh, a really strong individual, Dave McMurtry, who is helping us drive forward uh, pursuing government grants uh, from the infrastructure bill as well as working with Silver State Government Relations um, to help us make sure that we're our local centers in Nevada as well as Governor and uh, the folks in K Street are well aware of what Aquino is doing here. Quite a bit of um, organizational capacity added for um, uh, just this quarter. Next point, our patent portfolio is continued to grow in quarter. We added one U.S. and two international patents, which now totals 82 that have been issued and uh, allowed matters. Nine in the U.S., 74 in issued patents, and three allowed foreign applications. Our lithium ion patent application this quarter progressed from a provisional to a pending status as we continue to add to the IP portfolio. Next bullet point is that our Taiwan lead off refining equipment for acting metal ship and the installation and commissioning is really the next step. That commissioning is slated to start in July instead of June and there's been about a 30 day delay um, due to COVID restrictions, but we anticipate that that's the only delay that we should see. Next bullet point is we've accelerated our research and development efforts and we did access in the quarter the ATM for a total of 3.9 million as we said we would do before to achieve strategic steps. What we used those funds for was to invest in the equipment and people and that black mass that I referenced in the second bullet point here to support our pilot and the potential future scaling of that pilot. 
pilot, which could turn our pilot launch here at the Innovation Center into a revenue producing facility that we'll talk about shortly. Moving on to the next slide, slide number eight, this is more detail on Acme in Taiwan, which is um, still on track for our Q2 uh, and Q3 install commissioning and ramp. Uh, in Taiwan, Acme is our first partner uh, in the largest and fastest growing uh, part of the lead app battery market, really the lithium battery market, which is in the Asia Pacific region. As I mentioned before, our leader is on board and on the ground in Taipei working with Acme closely. Um, we will showcase the clean lead recycling technology for all lock refining in a market where the environmental drivers are getting stronger uh, and much more uh, quickly growing in importance and in their nature of uh, clean processing of metal. And Acme has those uh, strong relationships to the third bullet point with uh, uh, global battery manufacturers to develop a methodology to produce oxide directly from the off refined material. You, see, the only thing here is from the that below, concerns me is that numbers. China is supposed um, to attack they, uh, Taiwan and take over. The, uh, 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 I don't know why we would invest there. To Acme in Taiwan. Why not put the plant uh, very here? excited about uh, moving forward uh, with that installation and moving forward with the commercialized version of the first uh, off refined technology for lead. Moving on to slide number nine, this is just um, uh, really a marked opportunity that is staggeringly uh, quickly growing in the lithium space as well. And uh, the predicted volumes of used batteries make it imperative that recycling is done sustainably so we can feed the growth for demand and do it in a sustainable way. So it was worth it, the transition from fossil fuels to uh, a clean energy source and clean stored energy. For aquametals, we estimate our total addressable market to be quite interesting at 10 billion by mid-decade and up to 31 billion by 2030. And that's really based on offer refining recovery rates specific to our recovery, the value of what we can create uh, from the material. So we're quite excited about the market opportunities that we have as we move forward in the future. Moving on to slide 10, this summarizes the three areas how um, uh, lithium uh, uh, demand is rising at a very rapid rate. You can see in the upper left with the global demand for lithium-ion batteries being over 3.1 really terawatt hours by 2030. And uh, the second uh, uh, graphic to the right of that talks about supply chain risk. You'll see the regions where the various metals are coming from. And you might notice that um, in North America there's none when it comes to nickel and cobalt and lithium. However, aquamodes have demonstrated that we can uh, utilize our technology to generate nickel, uh, cobalt, and lithium uh, and do the nickel and cobalt in metal form and the lithium and hydroxide form, all of which are high value to feed that growth in demand. So recycling really does change the game and uh, puts um, uh, a great opportunity on a go-forward basis. On the bottom graph, you'll see that the lithium-ion battery recycling can become a game changer in the supply of lithium-ion battery material as we get towards the end of the decade. So now let's do a comparison on slide 11 of smelting uh, and standard hydro and off refining. There's three basic processes that are out there today. 95% of the lithium batteries today are unfortunately not recycled and end up in the landfill. And the 5% that are recycled go through a smelting process, um, which results with a high environmental impact and is not a viable long-term solution um, as it does not recover any of the lithium. So smelting is not lithium uh, recycling. In fact, really, there's no commercial lithium recycler going uh, on today in the world as we stand today. So there's a great opportunity to improve upon uh, uh, the old smelting processes. And the first step towards that is hydrometallurgy, which um, we've seen uh, multiple players that are out there in that uh, hydrometallurgical world working on chemical precipitation. Uh, first off, um, the challenge with chemical precipitation is not proven at scale, and um, it's expected to produce battery-grade precursors. We think that's high risk. We think that's high risk because of the impurities that can get into those chemical precipitation processes. And uh, it also, also, using 200 times the chemicals that we'll talk about compared to off refining can have great economic costs and great environmental costs and worker safety costs. And there's challenges to those methodologies um, that have not been proven. And we think off refining, frankly, is a better way. And what off refining differentiates, as I mentioned earlier, is that we create the high purity metals in metal form. 
And that is a low risk to get precursors. As you'll see in our press release that we put out today, and I'll show you a picture of it in the next slide, we not only produce nickel in metal form, we easily were able to take that nickel and metal form and make a nickel sulfate. And that is a really important step in getting to battery precursors with a known process, which is the way the primary metals are mined and today turned into those precursors from those pure metals. If you're making a pure metal to begin with, you can not only sell into a pure metals market, you can also get to those precursors without lengthy multi-year pre-qualification processes that are very stringent that we know all about because we have to go through that with our lead off refining. Um, and uh, it'll be even more complex in the lithium space. Going from metal to salt is a much straightforward, more path. Slide number 12 shows what materials we produce from the black mass that we've publicized to date. And you'll see in the left the picture of the black mass, and that's the amalgam of the ground of lithium ion batteries that have been discharged and ground into a material that can then begin to be processed. Today, again, that goes to a smelter. In the future, um, uh, uh, in a commercial level, we believe off refining will be the best solution because we've already produced that lithium hydroxide. And lithium hydroxide, as compared to lithium carbonate, has some advantages in the way that that becomes a cathode precursor for batteries. We've also produced the copper in, in metal form for copper foil production uh, for new batteries. And today's announcement of the high period nickel also easily be getting the nickel sulfate from that high period nickel is a great step forward in the, uh, the full link of getting from black mass to the end product. We're very proud of our accomplishments on this front. And um, we'd like to sit around a little bit. Seems exciting. I mean, if it works. Moving on to slide number 13. This is why um, the nickel one, uh, the nickel announcement is a major accomplishment. Um, first of all, the high period has been validated by an accredited third party lab. The high period nickel sells um, uh, for over $30,000 per ton. And the off refined nickel can easily be sold in the global metal market uh, because it's not just battery people buying nickel, it's, it's the steel and super alloys industry, et cetera, that has a high demand for nickel. We've seen quite a bit of news about nickel uh, based upon the Russian invasion of Ukraine and um, the uh, offline uh, uh, offlining of the nickel that is on the global market and driving up the cost of nickel. And that's a very interesting uh, element on, as we go into the future. The high purity nickel enables the battery grade nickel sulfate and how that nickel sulfate is made today, as I mentioned before, and other hydro precipitation methods will be much more difficult qualify and to manage those impurities, especially as they trickle through the system in uh, developed systems. We are the only non-smelting process to prove that we can recover these high value minerals in ultra pure form without multiple refining steps. What that equals is better economic and better environmental favorable results for everyone. Moving on to slide 14, the extraction of all critical minerals is nearly proven. The path to lithium revenue for aqua metals could begin in 2023. We are commencing orders of key lithium aqua refining pilot equipment for our innovation center, which is being prepared for commissioning of pilot operations to commence in a matter of months by August. We have already secured, as I mentioned earlier, the black mass input feedstock from multiple sources for pilot operations through the latter half of 2022 and all of our plans for 2023. And we have an upside opportunity. We believe that we can take the pilot operations at the Innovation Center and scale to meaningful quantities to achieve revenue of significance in 2023. We are also making significant progress working with Linico and will be planning to deploy lithium off refining in the Linico facility just down the road from our pilot um, and demonstration facility also in 2023. Judd, Ben, and I just um, uh, completed the meeting with the Linico team and are very uh, excited and proud of what they've been able to accomplish um, and, and provide us that deep stock of black mass so we can begin that process in addition to our own efforts. Slide number 15, I will summarize at the lithium off refining. Um, the expected advantages are that the lowest operating costs that are possible, we believe we can achieve. And the OPEX, which means operating expense estimates for, for competing technologies, as published with global reports, are between $2,200 to $5,000 per metric ton of black mass. And we expect to be significantly below the $2,200 in our processing costs. Our refining also uses one two hundredth 
of the chemicals of hydro processes, and we recycle the chemicals that we do. Our highest quality products that we produce have the highest percentage of the minerals recovered, and the valued range, depending upon the various types of feedstock, um, are quite large numbers per metric ton, as you can see, $12,500 to $32,000 per metric ton. We think we've got the best business model. We have the option to sell products to the battery supply chain or the metal industry. We also have a geographically unbound capability to, uh, with our business model to do that through licensing, as we tend to work through with Linico uh, right here in our own zip code, but anywhere in the world. Uh, and so we're not plant constrained. We have the optionality to engage in joint ventures with all parties um, that are interested in a joint venture to build and operate a recycling plant utilizing our refining technology and or be a recycler ourselves inclusive of our pilot line, which could become a meaningful demonstration plant that produces revenue for the company. And this is a nascent industry that's not replacing an incumbent technology, but rather setting the standards. So all lithium recycling facilities are being built from the ground up. In other words, they're all green fields. We want the green fields to be green. We want the lowest environmental impact. We want the only way to get to net zero through uh, uh, recycle to be through off refining because we are the only ones who use that renewable electron as the reagent rather than the chemical, rather than the fossil fuel based fires. So we also improve the worker safety greatly because we're not doing hot work and we're not um, dealing with highly caustic uh, large quantities of chemicals and waste streams. So the worker protection, uh, particularly as we arm the United States and um, other regions that want to defend and support their critical minerals um, with technologies, we also want to arm our workers for the safest way to work in these plants in places that people want to go work. And that's a really critical uh, element of our uh, core plan is that worker safety. So I'm going to pass the, uh, the presentation on now to Judd Merrill, our CFO. <laughs> And Judd will uh, begin now. Go ahead, Judd. All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, I've got a few comments on each of the financial statements. I'm going to start first on the balance sheet, which is on slide 17. Um, as of March 31st, 2022, we had total cash of $9 million, working capital of $7.9 million. And this keeps us with our continued healthy cash and working capital balances. The accounts receivable. Uh, amount includes money due from the sale of equipment. Uh, the asset held for sale includes non-core assets that are no longer necessary for a future operating plan. Um, and in fact, um, we'll note that there were some assets sold in Q1, including about $800,000 worth of equipment to Linico and $600,000 of non-core equipment to other vendors. Also during the quarter, we exercised our warrant with Linico. Uh, which increased our ownership in the company. The amount of increase was $500,000 payment that was made in Q1, and our current ownership is approximately 12%. The lease receivable includes our lease to buy agreement with Linico, which is accounted for as a sell type lease. On the uh, liability section, there was very little change compared uh, to year end, um, and we, as the company continued to be debt free. Uh, now moving to the income statement on uh, slide 18. During the first quarter of 2022, Aqua Metals was focused on research and development activities to enhance our ability to recycle metals found in lithium ion batteries. And we commenced shipping uh, equipment to Acme Metals. Met um, so we were not in commercial production during the quarter of 2022. And as a result, we didn't generate any uh, revenues during this quarter. Cost of product sales decreased by approximately 38% during the quarter to 0.9 million compared to 1.6 million in Q1 of 2021. Um, the decrease in Q1 of 2022 is largely due to uh, wrapping up the plant cleanup project. Uh, research and development costs included expenditures related to improving the lithium-ion battery recycling technology. During the three months ended March 31st, 2022, research and development increased overall for the quarter by approximately 91% compared to the three months ended March 31st, 2021. Research and development has allowed us to make significant improvements in our lead processes, 
and is rapidly advancing our lithium um, battery recycling processes. General and administrative expenses increased by approximately 20% for the three months ended March 31st, 2022, compared to the three months ended March 31st, 2021. The increases in general and administrative expenses include changes in payroll and an increase in professional uh, professional fees. We ended the quarter uh, with a net loss of 4.4 million or a negative six cents per basic and diluted share. Um, that was compared to a net loss of 4.1 million or a negative six cents per basic and diluted share for the first quarter of 2021. Okay, and then finally, I'm going to move to the savings cash flow, which is on slide 19. Uh, net cash is an operating activity for the three months ended March 31st, 2022, with 3.6 million. This covers our OPEX and GNA cash uh, needs and was adjusted for non cash items. This amount is partially driven by 2021 accrued plant cleanup costs that were paid in Q1. So we uh, have a very small amount of shares being sold as uh, they talk about the finances. Average last year. As you can see, 150. So you can't really take the after hours seriously. The increase is also partially due to higher annual compliance and audit costs. We do expect our monthly base cash costs to be closer to $800,000 a month due to addition of more employees and consultants as we invest in more lithium ion battery recycling technology. Uh, the net cash provided by investing activities for the three months ended March 31st, 2021-22 was $0.4 million, which was made up of the receipt of $1.1 million of proceeds from the sale of equipment offset by $0.3 million uh, used towards the purchase of property and equipment and $0.5 million uh, used towards the warrant exercise for Lenico. Uh, the net cash provided by financing activities pulled a full, total of $4.1 million for the three months ended March 31st, 2020. We have to make sure the investment in Linico was not because Linico uh, wouldn't pay. Of shares That's important. Linico has got to get that uh, plant up. Three quarters of 2021, we the ATM. However, in Q1 2022, uh, we did strategically and opportunistically make use of the ATM to strengthen our lithium battery recycling efforts, and this includes securing the black mat, investing in equipment for the pilot plant at the Innovation Center, and adding optionality to scaling the plants with larger size core infrastructure, all with intent to get to revenue soon. Uh, with that, that includes my remarks on the financial statement. I will now turn it over to the operator uh, to begin the question and answer portion of our call. Thank you. At this time, we will be conducting a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. A confirmation tool will indicate your line is in the question field. You may press star 2 if you'd like to remove your question from the queue. For participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to stick up your handset before pressing the star key. As a reminder, you may submit questions via the web by using the Ask a Question feature on the side of your screen. Our first question comes from the line of Sean Ferguson with Water Tower Research. Please proceed with your question. Hi, thanks, guys. Uh, my first question is around lithium hydroxide of pure form. When you say that, uh, what does that mean to aqua metals? And I guess what, what, is, what is produced otherwise? And you're trying to understand the importance of that. Yeah, Sean, thanks for the question. And um, it's unique to aqua metals that we are the only company that's produced lithium hydroxide. And I'm going to ask Ben to kind of talk about the meaning of that uh, uh, and, and how that works as a precursor. Yeah, thanks. Um, so the, the advantage of it being very pure is it is uh, able to, yep, go ahead. It's able to meet an existing spec, which allows it to go directly into the precursor manufacturing. Um, many of the existing processes out there uh, result in, like Steve said earlier, carbonate that have to be converted in a costly manner to a hydroxide. Us going directly to the hydroxide has multiple benefits and cost savings to the, the, the precursor manufacturer. Okay, thanks for the explanation. Uh, my second question is regarding 
when you say you could generate some revenue, what, what does that mean? Please? Is there any scope or scale that we can get around that from a perspective on the timing and actually how much revenue the pilot plan might generate? Yeah, so we're excited about the uh, Innovation Center. It's not a small facility, so it allows us the opportunity to not only build our first pilot, which will commence uh, very soon in a matter of months, but to scale that pilot to really effectively a small demonstration plan. And uh, those economics, that demonstration plan could be uh, exciting for the company. I'll ask Judd to comment on that. Yeah, I mean, the, the size of the plant allows us, with the, even with the pilot, to reach run rate of up to 20 to 25 million a year in revenue. And that's that current pricing for uh, metal? Yeah, that, that would be a current, current pricing. Ninety percent recovery. In, in Let's call it seventy percent, realistically. Um, Wonder what happens to the other thirty percent or ten percent, as he called it. Uh, uh, sales perspective uh, related to that opportunity. Yeah, so, so we're geographically in balance with with the market. Um, we're 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 we're
hard to believe. But in Europe, that legislation is more advanced than even in the U.S., um, which will probably catch up uh, in Asia Pacific. So we see great opportunity uh, for interest in our technologies for, uh, for parties that are uh, interested in recycling batteries and building that ecosystem in, in the European model. I think I was looking specifically for what was going on in the lead market other than the lead market. So I don't know if there's an update on a potential lead partner within the uh, European market. Yeah, so um, uh, in terms of the lead side for the uh, European market, we see more activity really in the Asia PAC region and in uh, uh, Mexico and South America. And uh, I think that's because there's more growth and capacitization of facilities and greenfield build is where the um, uh, the technology fits best. It, it checks all the boxes, and those are the regions that you're seeing those uh, types of projects being planned more than in the U.S. Um, uh, so um, and, and more than in Europe, because those are more mature markets in terms of the lead acid battery industry um, that, that um, don't have as much of a need for the capacitization. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Our next question comes from the line of Ramit Dayal and Stephen Wright. Please proceed with your question. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in terms of scaling, you know, the lithium ion recycling uh, opportunity, um, what are the catalysts that you sort of need to now, uh, you know, deliver on to go from pilot to commercial? So we're following a technology readiness level um, system that's, that's common in the chemical engineering world that allows us to meet certain measures, meet certain efficiencies throughput uh, based on a defined test plan. Once those metrics are met, then it's, then it's typically about adding additional operational hours and adding additional capacity to, to reach those higher scales. And that's where Steve mentioned, Steve and Judd mentioned earlier, the ability to scale even this facility that we're at here at the Innovation Center. Once we, once we meet those metrics, that would be a, the, the goal is to start adding unit operations and adding capacity uh, based on that TRL level. And, and one thing I'll add to that, too, I mean, is that on the TRL level, as we progress through them um, and having a facility, we are much better positioned than I think a lot of players in the market that are applying for all these. Uh, infrastructure opportunities. It's a once in a generation opportunity to be able to receive something like a 50 or 100 million dollar plus grant, um, and, and that's the word grant, non-dilutive, uh, to be able to, to build and operate a very large facility. And getting through those TRL levels as quickly as possible gives us uh, the opportunity to unlock uh, grants like that, which we're, again, from an organizational capability uh, perspective, actively. And that's very important. The guy comes so from Caltech, a, like a month uh, Democratic State. These uh, grants are going to be issued quickly. So, for the so I think that uh, all, like comment, this company all could all get its hands on about the, uh, $50 million, dollars, as they just said. So what, what we've called our prototype uh, here, or pilot, I think Steve referred to it earlier, here at our innovation center. That's better than a dilution. Um, should raise the price up, but then they'll dilute a little more, probably to bring them up to 100 million. Demonstration and proof, which would allow us. Hopefully, when the stock is at seven dollars. Well, under a 12-month timeline. And that fits also well within um, the, uh, the timeline of these government grants. Um, you know, there's there's multiple grants that are out there uh, that they're uh, pursuable, and those do take time. And we're already underway in working on those, uh, and those are typically around a year plus or minus uh, to get through the entire grant process. So we could be quarters away or um, a year or a quarter or two away from uh, a very large grant, um, but possibly sooner because the, uh, the U.S. government, is particularly based upon what's happened in Ukraine, is very focused on it. And, uh, I don't know if anybody else heard, but driving into the office this morning, I heard our president talking about the war in Ukraine. And then in the midst of that, referenced in the discussion that uh, the United States needs to secure lithium and nickel in country. And that is something that I think the government is very interested in working with parties that can help affect that goal. And I showed that graph earlier that showed a grand total of zero mineral production in those areas in North America. And so the U.S. government is nothing uh, more than motivated and interested in finding the right opportunities to make that happen. And can these 
two processes, you know, one with the government grants and one just with the technology itself. Can they run in parallel or does the technology need to be ready first and then you apply for the grant? So the technology needs to get through certain um, uh, TRL levels in order for the government to choose which entities that get prioritized and stack ranks who it builds doles out the grants to. So it's not an unlimited supply of grants, and so there's going to be a limited number of entities that are applying for those grants. And we feel that with our announcement proving that we can extract these critical minerals that the president himself is referencing in the midst of the discussion on the biggest news in 50 years, the war in Ukraine, um, it, it gives us an opportunity to uh, uh, win those grants. There's no guarantees for any party to align for those grants, but we feel that we have great opportunity based upon the progress that we've made. Understood. And, you know, my other question is around just, you know, you're, you're, you're able to extract sort of other metals from the black mass, like nickel, copper, etc. Now, um, how much complexity and cost, you know, come into play to do that versus just focusing on Lithium, extracting or recycling the lithium. Uh, so Steve mentioned earlier our target conversion cost being well below twenty two hundred dollars. And each one of those metals has a, a certain amount of conversion cost with them. But uh, the, the system works most efficiently as uh, an entire system. So just going after the, the lithium, for example, leaving those those other metals um, wouldn't be the most efficient process, but surely you could save money by not recovering the nickel and cobalt. We just don't think it makes sense uh, to do so. Okay, understood. And my other questions were already um, discussed. I'm taking my um, other questions off time. Thank you. Great, thanks. And I see no further questions over the phone. I would turn the phone over to Glenn Axelrod for web questions. All right, thanks, Carlos. So we have quite a few questions in the two seats, so uh, we'll try to get through them all in the next 15 minutes. Um, first question, let's say you extract nickel from black mass using the auto refining process. Can the remaining black mass uh, go through the process again to extract I sent a simple question. My question was, what's it going to cost a recycle, a recycle, a recycle so, company uh, to buy this equipment? Let's see if they avoid the question. did actually run the process just to recover nickel. Um, surely you could take the, the rest of the material and, and go back after it. But the way our, our process is designed is to um, upfront set up to recover all of the metals. So it wouldn't be a problem to come back and get the other ladder. It's just the, the way the process is designed to run is to following our process flow, individually go after each metal um, with the initial path. Okay, I think you may have partially answered this next question, but I'll ask it anyway when you uh, follow on. Um, would getting the four metals out require four separate steps? So yeah, there's going to be, it's definitely a multi-step process. And, and um, for the most part, each metal that we're going after, when you refer to the four, I would imagine you're talking about the cobalt, nickel, lithium, and copper. And those all individually require um, their, their own step and own, own module. Uh, we also recover the manganese as a fifth metal as well. Okay, thank you. Next question. What is your capability to scale aqualizers? Speak to the capital inputs and possible normalization of production. Okay. So both, similar in both our lead and our lithium program, we, we design and typically lay out a, a new installation with a um, up front and downstream um, scale a little bit larger than required, which basically allows us to take and add modular um, metal recovery units in what I call the, the middle of the process. That, that's where the aqua refinery technology becomes very important. So um, we look at the fertility footprint, we look at the upfront processing, the downstream processing, and design it all so you can efficiently um, add in additional modules without having um, too much capital involved. Um, and you, you could do that in a very modular form. Too much is not an amount. On, what is the amount? Uh, modules on a quarter by quarter basis. That's something that can be done. Okay, thank you. New EV and legacy OEM companies are looking into lithium battery recycling. Is Rocket Metals planning to talk to these guys and see if there are opportunities? 
So we're not only planning stocks to those entities, we are, and we have, have a commercial team that is engaging um, uh, as quickly as possible with the various entities that are out there. Um, those are some of the areas that can uh, potentially um, uh, include opportunities like in the joint venture category, uh, as well as feedstock supply uh, for Linico as one example, and uh, tying together partnerships um, uh, of an eco network of supplier of lithium ion batteries, breaking and separation, creation of black mass. Linico will be producing a lot of black mass in uh, the future, and uh, that gives it an opportunity for us to process those materials not only within Linico, but um, it, it even expands the black mass production uh, as we go forward. So those types of discussions and relationships are of a high priority for the company, and uh, they continue. Okay, thank you. Next question. Will the operational cost and capital cost of extracting nickel, nickel, copper, and lithium be the same as for men? So, no, the, the operational and capital costs will be significantly different. Uh, Steve mentioned the, the $2,200 per ton um, that we expect to be below. That, that's more than the, the value of, of lead historically. So, there, there's a significant difference in operational costs. But what we're most excited about is the amount of margin that is available through lithium um, recycling is significantly higher than what we're currently experiencing in the lead industry. Okay, next question. Do you anticipate royalty revenue to begin with the startup of operations in Taiwan? The answer is yes. So um, it will be not a large sum of royalties, but we'll connect, collect royalties uh, really beginning with the, the first production of material off of those machines. So we'll enter into our first royalty collection uh, in the next one to two quarters. Okay, thank you. Next question. Where does the black map come from? Is Linux providing any black map? So um, black map comes from broken up lithium ion spent lithium ion batteries. Um, and yes, we have received and are working with black mass that Linico is providing um, as they go through their own scaling operations. Okay, thank you. Next question. When do you expect Linico to complete the purchase of the facility? Yes, yeah, so Linico um, when they when we did the lease to, to buy um, agreement uh, had uh, had till March of 2023 to make uh, the full payment. Um, they they are incentivized to pay that off um, in October. Um, if they pay in October, they the purchase price is a million dollars less. Um, so it's either October of this year or March of uh, 2023. Okay, thank you. And, and your last question, then I'll turn the call over to you, Steve. How do you, or how should we view the scale up? Is it similar to the red path where you went from one small bench scale electrolyzer to a single full size unit to multiple full size units? Yeah, they're not going to ask my question. So the scale up of the technology for the lithium is going to look different than we did it for the lead. Um, we went from one full size aqualizer to 96 of them, uh, and uh, that was a big jump. And uh, we see other players in the industry in the lithium space trying to make that same big jump. And we probably learned a thing or two uh, from making that big jump. Uh, and what we're doing is more of a methodical approach with pilot to uh, a demonstration plants to larger demonstration plants to large deployment of facilities. So it's going to be a step-by-step -step process. Um, the fortunate thing about that uh, with the, the lithium recycling that does generate, um, as we mentioned earlier, potentially significant, meaningful enough amount of revenue that you could even carry the company, uh, but that um, uh, allows us to, to really take each step through that technology risk level reduction as we go through the process. With our really eye on uh, the large facility being paid for um, uh, substantially, if not all, by a government grant, um, by a government that's very interested in um, entities that can produce these critical minerals right now in the U.S. in a safe environment for its workers. Perfect. There's no further questions in the queue, and I don't see any uh, in the phone. So I'll ask you, Steve, for some closing remarks, and then we'll end the call. I asked the so question, well, how much does it cost? Thank you, everybody, for attending today. A lot of new information. If you have any uh, need for follow-up, please uh, feel free to reach out to us through Bristol. We'd be happy to engage and discuss with you. And we'll continue to keep everyone updated as we move forward, and really appreciate everybody's interest in aqua metals. And thank you for attending again. Have a great day.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This does conclude today's conference, and you may disconnect your lines at this time. Thank you for your participation, and have a wonderful day.